I'm going live. I didn't know I was going to do it either, but I sat down to sew these mittens and I thought, why not just turn on the camera? Because some people say they would like to see me sew my mittens. So my house isn't company ready. I've been busy like crazy. We've been away. We went away last weekend for our anniversary trip. We came home in two days time. I'm leaving for the Homesteaders of America conference, which is why I'm sewing mittens. And my house is a wreck. It is what it is. Take me as I am. But right now I've got to concentrate on getting mittens done. So I may not be talking a lot. I don't know. I've got to just concentrate on doing this. If you want to see how I'm sewing these mittens up, you're welcome here. Uh, I uh, Let's see. Who's that? Darlene. Hello, Darlene. Glad to have you. All right. I'm putting the camera down on my mittens and I'm just getting to it because I don't have time to waste. I got to get a lot done before this weekend. Now, I cut up these, a sweater this morning that was this sweater, and I made lots of backs of different sorts. So this pair of mittens is gonna have these as backs. And as you can see, when I cut out my patterns, I'm very persnickety to make sure that one side exactly matches the other side. So when they're together, you can see the patterns match exactly. So that's what I'm doing with those. And I'm gonna use, this is for the cuffs. And this is the finger top. This will be the thumb and the fingers like this, purple. And this one is going to be the wrist end, the thumb here and then the wrist there. So that will be the palm side of the mitten, the back side of the mitten and the cuff of the mitten and that's what I'm doing so first I have to match the palm finger ends with the palm wrist ends and I'm going to lay them out right sides up like that thumbs in the middle so they're like that and then I'm going to lay right sides together this is the wrist portion with the joining thumbs like this and then I just pin them a little to hold them secure in the right space just a few pins to keep the edges even all right we'll do this one first Might help if I thread my machine. Let's see if I got any bobbin thread in here already. I do. That should be fine. I also have to make mitten liners to go inside these. My machine's getting very distant dusty because as I sew sweater material it throws a lot of sweater dust around which means I'm going to have to clean out my machine <clears throat> probably with a I want to pick up one of those cans of air so I can blow down inside the machine and get it all cleaned up nice all right let's get that threaded like that and around that little loopy thing there now see if it'll pick up the bobbin and there we go hopefully that'll do it Even though this is a knit, I always start with a straight stitch and then I zigzag afterward. I 
I find that the pattern has the thumb pretty wide, so I usually make my adjustment in my stitch. from here up around here like a thumb to there and that looks right so I'm now going to zigzag it. Now I've recently acquired a serger which is going to make this a lot easier but I haven't yet looked into the manual on how to use it and that the learning curve is going to take more time for me than doing this part twice because like the serger will cut it We'll zigzag it and trim it all at the same time. Where here I have to do a second zigzag, a second stitch, a zigzag stitch, and then cut it and trim it. But I just haven't taken the time to familiarize myself with the serger yet. And I feel like I need to do that when I can be more relaxed about it. Okay, there's the zigzag stitch around the thumb area and the seam and I'll cut this close to the zigzag. Getting rid of the excess fabric. I'll check your comments in a minute but I'm, I put this up very impromptu. Just turn the camera on. Cut my threads. Right. And here's sewn together. The, uh, let me see if I can get it where you can see it there. Here's the thumb. This is inside out, of course. So I'm going to put it right side out to try it on my hand just to see if the thumb is a good size for this mitten top. I think it's fine. By the time I put the liner in, it's going to be fine. So now I'm going to put the mitten back on. And to do that, I take my mitten back and I put them right sides together. For this, I'm going to put the thumb back out the other side so I can see it while I'm sewing and I won't accidentally sew it in the seam. All right, and there's the mitten back. All right, I'm going to pin these together. And while I do that, maybe I can look at a few of your comments. If anybody's here. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Hi, Vicki. I'm crocheting an animal for my son, watching you. A Pikachu, nice. And Nifty Thrifty, hello. And there's Stacy Hine, hello. I took a break today. Love your mitts. Thank you. My know me. Hello, Brenda. Haven't seen you in a long time. Yay, I made a live. I love your impromptu live streams. Well, it is what it is, Brenda. Okay. And back down here to the mittens. And I'm going to try to make this as straight as possible with the pattern and the grain. Right sides together. There, right sides together. Sometimes I have to adjust it a couple of times before I'm happy with how it's lining up. I'll get this over here. 
and pin it. And pin the curve, trying to get the seams as even as possible. Get that thumb out of the way and pin this down. Working with knits can be pretty tricky. Some of them, like this part is merino wool and it's thinner and slippier, more, more slippery, slipperier, is that such a word? Alrighty. All right, now this piece here I'm gonna cut off. This was part of a seam in the sweater when I cut the sweater apart and that kind of sticks out a little extra. So we'll just trim that off. And put that on. Usually I make the liners first. Today I was excited to see how this fabric is going to look. So I just jumped right in to make the actual mitten backs first. The actual fancy part of the mittens and not the liners. All right, let me get rid of this thread that was left behind. All right, there we got the palm side and the back side all pinned together. And now I'll stitch them up. I'm going to stitch all the way around here. Again, I'm going to use a straight stitch first. Keeping my edges even and any seams on the palm side, I'm going to fold up. Over here, this is a stress point, so I triple stitch here. And I always have to be careful to pull any folds <coughs> away or I get a bump there. And then I have to tear it out and do it over. So I'm trying to keep this nice and straight. There's once, twice, three times. this a look see make sure it looks right before I do the zigzag on it all right let me it's a little funny sometimes when one fabric like this is a lot thinner than the backing fabric okay so there's the backs it's got purple here, which I was excited to find something with purple in it. There's the thumb. Here's the palms with purple, solid purple up here and gray down here. All right, they look good. So now I'm going to zigzag around to make it nice and secure. And then I'll trim them.
rings. My telephone never fails when I do a live. My telephone rings. Okay, there's the zigzag all the way around. And now I will trim all that extra fabric off so it doesn't bunch up in the seams. This is the part the serger would help with. the mitten back. Now once I put the liner in it poofs it out really nice and makes it look a lot firmer. Right now it's a little limp looking but when the liner goes in. Okay let's take a look over here. Okay here's the mitten. I love the purple that was in here. I was happy to find fabric a sweater that had purple in it so I could put purple on here. Now I'm going to make, I'll be putting this cuff on here like this. It'll have that cuff, not that long, but more like, more like that. It'll have a cuff on it. But I have to make my liners before I put the cuff on because the cuff is what holds the liner and the backs all together. All right, let me look at your comments. I've been battling a few bouts of the flu. Oh, Brenda, I'm sorry. It leaves and comes back. And the brain doesn't function well when that happens. Sorry I haven't been around. Well, I've missed seeing you. <laughs> slickery. Yeah, there you go. It's slickery. That's pretty. You are so talented. Well, you do something long enough, you, you get better at it. Your mittens are so cute. Thank you. I'll get it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Okay. Well, it looks like there's only a few people on. Let's see, maybe maybe 10 on. There's four thumbs up. Thank you for that. Um, I might just leave the camera running until my husband gets back. Um, for some reason, he doesn't like us broadcasting to the world when he doesn't know the camera's on. <laughs> I don't blame him. Okay, so I'm going to be making more mittens. Let me show you the other backs I cut out from that same sweater. They all, they're all a little different because I, when you have a print that you want to cut matching backs out, you have to waste quite a bit of fabric because you have to maneuver around the print on the fabric to get them precisely where you need them, which means you can't just put them close to each other all the way across the fabric and get lots. So unfortunately you lose more material that way. So I got these, which are very similar. Here's, let me show you the one I just did. So you can see they're all just a little different in the placement of where things are. See, this has the flower at the top. This has the flower, the poinsettia type flower more at the bottom with the purple at the top. And this one, again, has it more at the top. And this one has half a flower at the top. And then this kind of a print at the bottom with the purple down the middle. And then this one, I ran out of all the flowers and everything. And I think this is going to turn out pretty cool, even though they're, they're different, is I made it so this will go up the outside of each hand like this. See? 
and then I'll, I'll choose some interesting cuffs and different colors to go with them. I could pick up on this green here and mix that in there or some black, or I could put a totally different bright color mixed in too. That's the fun of making these is that you get to design, you know, you, you take your sweaters and mix and match all different patterns and everything. See, here's one with cuffs that's got different grays in it and I can mix that with grays and reds and whites and blacks some it's pretty fun so but I gotta go ahead and make some liners so let me go get my lining material I don't think I have it out here nope I don't here let me show you something though if I can reach them yeah all right these are pieces I've cut out already so when I go to design my mittens, <laughs> okay, these are the, the uh, wrist, the palm side wrists. And I got all these different ones to choose from so far. And then these are backs, other backs. I have all these different greens and blues and purples and reds and oranges that I can mix and match to make mitten backs with. And then I have other ones somewhere here. These are cuffs. These are cuffs. <laughs> so I just go through all these different uh, cutouts I've made and it's fun to pick them out and lay them out and try to design something that each piece will complement the other part and look pretty together. And then when I'm done putting them together, I can sew buttons on the wrists uh, usually I like to get vintage buttons to do that. Or if I'm going to applique something, I actually usually will take a, a planer back and then before I sew the mitten together, I'll applique something on here like hearts or trees or leaves, sometimes maple leaves. I'll cut them out and, and put them on in the appropriate fall colors. Like here's a green one or this orangey colored one. I could cut out green maple leaves and orange maple leaves and put them on those, which I usually do with those colors. So those are fun to do. Yes, people are quiet in here today. Hi, Laura Hun. Gossmania, hello. So happy to have you here. You've done a lot of cutting. Oh, golly, baby, you know it. I have done a lot of cutting. These all these from the sweater I did this morning. And the other ones I've been doing them, you know, as I go and get my sweaters. And I wash them and shrink them and uh, lay them out and cut out all my pieces. And then I start the mixing. So it takes quite a while to make a pair of mittens and then sewing them together. And of course, each pair of mittens has a second pair inside because I make a fleece pair to go inside to line them completely with fleece. So I'm going to go get my fleece lining now to work on that. I don't know if I should just shut this down. I think I will. There's not that many that were interested. So you've probably seen enough. I'm just going to do the same thing with the fleece lining and sew that into another mitten. And then I'll put it inside the good mitten, put the cuff on, and sew all of them together so that when you turn it inside out, you don't see any seams and it's all nice and smooth and it holds everything together. So that's how I make my mittens. Have an awesome day. You too, Laura, honey. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. It's just a quick impromptu hello while I sew my mittens. Because I was all alone here. Jeffrey's taking a nap. And, and my husband's out on his run. Bye-bye.